Good morning. Once again, I want to welcome you to our weekly Bible study. Before that, I want to wish you all a Happy New Year. And my prayer is that 2021 will be a blessed year for you and your family. God bless you richly. We're going to continue our study from 2 Peter chapter 2. And we'll see Peter is now shifting his attention to false teachers. And actually, we're going to look at the, at least read the first 10 verses and see how far we can cover from that portion of the scripture. So let us read from 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. The title of our teaching will be False Teachers and Their Destruction. False Teachers and Their Destruction. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. For they will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with the fabricated stories. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them, and their destruction has not been sleeping. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them in chains of darkness to be held for judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people, but protected Noah and the preacher of righteousness and seven others, if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes and made them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly, and if he rescued Lot, a righteous man who was distressed by the depraved conduct of the lawless, for the righteous man living among them day after day was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. If this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from the trials and to hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment. <coughs> this is especially true of those who follow the corrupted desires of the flesh and despise authority. Peter brings our attention to false teachers. This portion of 10 verses can be divided into two categories, and they are the first, the promise of their judgment. We saw that in the first three verses. And then you will see the precedent of judgment. He is giving three specific illustration of the judgment that was poured upon previously. So he is giving this to warn the false teachers that their destruction is waiting for them on the judgment day. So here we have this portion of the scripture being introduced to us by Peter. So let us look at the 
first verse of the second chapter. Follow me. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. That statement, there were also false prophets among the people. The terminology among the people is a reference to there were false prophets among the Israelites. God dealt with them. So he is using there were false prophets among the nation of Israel, misleading the people. And they directed their attention away from serving God. They draw them to false idols and worshiping different gods. So he is saying, just like there was in the Old Testament, false prophets, and the next sentence he said, there will be false teachers among you. That is a future reference. So for all of us who are reading this letter from Peter, we will understand there will be false teachers will arise. However, we already know that there were false teachers among the people. If you recall, I want to say uh, first chapter, second Peter, chapter one, we looked at verse 16. Listen to this. For we did not follow cleverly devised stories when we told you about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we were the eyewitnesses of uh, his majesty. So he was already making references to them. Among you, those Gentile churches, there were already false prophets and false teachers were present by the indication of they have approached them with a clever, cleverly devised stories or fabricated stories to derail genuinely serving, serving God by the people and they were derailed by those teachers. So it has past reference to Israel and the present reference to the church they belong to. There were already people who have crept in and started introducing the false teaching. And then for us who are the beneficiaries of this letter. We're reading right now, he is also warning us, there will be false teachers among you. I think it is predicted by Jesus Christ in the church, there will be false prophets and false teachers will come in the name of Jesus Christ. So he said, they will come and deceive many. And Jesus already warned us in Gospel of Matthew chapter 24, how to discern those false teachers and false prophets. So he said, uh, go back to verse one, what there were false prophets among the people just as there will be false teachers among you, they will secretly introduce 
destructive heresies. They will come. It may not be their theology so much as their moral conduct and behavior will be alienating from God. So he said they may come in secretly using the destructive heresies. Then he used even denying the sovereign Lord who brought them. Now that is the center of this identification of the false teachers. How do we know they are false teachers? They said they will even deny the sovereign Lord who bought them. They will deny it. The sovereign refers to the master, the Lord, and the uh, ruler that we are following. They do not want to acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord, the ruler, and he has domain, taken domain in their life. They will even deny that. That is the key for us to understand who will be the false teachers. And they deny the very blood that Jesus has used and shed to purchase us, to cleanse us from our sins. And he has delivered us. And those false teachers among you will deny the fact not only the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ, but also deny the power of the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. That will bring those who conduct themselves in that manner, that will bring swift, very soon, the destruction on themselves. So it is predicted the false teachers and false prophets will be judged by God. And he said, soon it's going to come. They may prolong that a little longer because the judgment day is not arrived yet. But on that day, God will judge them for deceiving believers, Christians, into uh, going in the wrong direction. Verse 2. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. That is a reference to their conduct, their lasciviousness, their sensuality. They are used to deprive and bring a, a uh, lack of respect to the Lord Jesus Christ and to the Christianity. And he said, many will follow. A lot of people will be following those teachers and they have been deceived. And not only by their uh, sensual conduct, look at verse 3. In their greed... These teachers will exploit you with the fabricated stories. Money will become the motivating factor for them to tell fabricated stories, exaggerated stories about Lord Jesus Christ and your redemption. So the redemptive work will be challenged by false teachers and false prophets. And look at the next sentence. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them. What they are doing right now and what they have done in the past, they're waiting for their destruction, their judgment. They said that the condemnation is hanging over them. And their destruction has not been sleeping. Now, that 
is an interesting way to describe their distraction has not been sleeping. So now Peter personified who that distraction is. So the executioner is not sleeping, even though he's waiting for his patience, patiently waiting to execute judgment and condemnation upon their false teachings and false prophecy that's been spread in the midst of the church. Now he is saying, God has not been sleeping. So in one sense, he is telling us, the executioner is not sleeping. Sure enough, their destruction and their damnation is soon approaching. Now, I would like you to look at verses 4 through 8. Here, Peter just explained false prophets and false teachers, those who are among you, you have destruction coming. The condemnation of God's judgment is coming upon them. And he is now using the remainder of the verses to give specifically three examples of how the destruction that has already taken place in some instance. This is all coming from book of Genesis. So let us look the first illustration of the judgment. The first illustration of the uh, uh, illustration of the fallen angels. Look at verse four. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell. Now, <clears throat> it starts with a word, if. Every time we use if, it's a conditional word. If you do this, then this is what's going to happen. Now, look carefully how Peter is using that word. It started as a long sentence. It doesn't end until the verse 9. Let me show it to you. It's keep repeating one word, if, 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 five times, and then he gives the answer. Look at this, verse four. For if God did not spare angels. Verse five. If he, if he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people. Verse 6, if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes and made them an example. Verse 7, and if he rescued Lot, a righteous man who was. Now look at verse 9. 9, if this is so. So five times... Peter is using that term, if, 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 then what? If this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment. So that is the bottom line of these three illustrations. And he says, if God already used judgment and punishment upon three of these illustrations for, toward the ungodly, then you can count on it. Those who are claiming to be the false teachers and false prophets, surely you're going to be punished by 
God. And that's the focal point he is trying to bring our attention to. So let's go back, verse 4. <coughs> verse 4. If God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them in chains of darkness to be held for judgment. Now, here, there, is, there were angels who have sinned. Now, we know from Isaiah chapter 14, Lucifer, who was a worship leader up in the heavenly realm, because of his self-will and selfishness, he wants, wanted to be equal with the God. The same admiration and the worship and the exaltation, he coveted to have it. But God kicked him out of the heavenly place. One of the archangels spent time in the awesome presence of God due to rebellious attitude, rebellious conduct. God kicked him out. According to Revelation chapter 12, we have the indication at least one-third of the angels have fallen with Lucifer. As we know from Ephesians, there are evil powers roaming around this earth. So they couldn't be the one he is referring to here. He said, if God did not spare angels when they sinned. <coughs> when did they sin? They sent them to hell. We know right now, Satan stands in the presence of God, and if you read the book of Job, chapter 1, and he appeared in the presence of God, and God is asking, where have you been? I've been roaming around here and there and found a man named Job. So, he is roaming around, he and his rest of cohorts. However, there is a group of angels have committed a sin and they have been locked up in hell. The word used there, but to send them to hell. Jesus referred to hell as Gehenna. That was the closest illustration Jesus could show to the disciples and the crowd. Gehenna in Jerusalem is a dumping ground. It had a constant fire that is burning. So hell will be a place that constant fire is going on. So he used Gehenna, the valley of Gehenna, where the dumping ground in Jerusalem was the reference here as a hell. But there are other references of Hades, and also Tartarus. Tartarus is a lower than the Hades. And this is the particular location according to the expositors and the commentators I have read. They said that's even deeper than that. That is a very dark place. And these Angels who committed sin, he sent them to hell, putting them in a chains of darkness to be held for judgment. The first illustration 
he started with the fallen angels. But within that group, they have committed something. Now, Gospel of Matthew chapter 8, Jesus was casting out demons when he crossed the sea on the other side, Matthew 8. Matthew 8, verse 28. Let's, uh, let's read that. Matthew 8, 28. When he arrived at the other side in the region of Gadarenes, two demon-possessed men coming from tombs met him. They were so violent that no one could pass that way. What do you want with us, son of God? They shouted. Have you come here to... Now pay attention to the way the demons responded to Jesus. Let me read the latter part of the sentence. Have you come here to torture us before the appointed time? So the demons already knew there is a time is going to come and the judgment and the punishment of God is going to be applied to them. And they already knew. So when Jesus appeared, these demons crying out to them and saying, hey, Jesus, don't you think it's a little bit premature to come and sending us away to the abyss? Oh, did he, go, did he say that? Well, he did in the Gospel of Luke. Let's look at that. Luke chapter 8. Fascinating conversation. Luke chapter 8. I believe it's verse 31. Let's look at that. Luke 8, 31. And they, the demons, begged Jesus repeatedly not to order them go into the abyss. So the demons knew their doomsday is going to come and they will be sent to the abyss or to hell. And the sin that this particular angel, what was it, is not described by Peter. We do not know that from reading from Peter. However, <coughs> Jude, verses 6 and 7, if you look at uh, Jude, verses 6 and 7, we have this account. And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority, but abandoned their proper dwelling, these he has kept in darkness, bound with an everlasting chains for punishment on the great day. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up for sexual immorality and perversion. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. Now, I have mentioned earlier when we studied, started this second Peter letter, Jude has similar thoughts being expressed. So even though second Peter doesn't tell us what was the sin these angels have committed, 
But Jude make a reference to verse 6. The angels who did not keep their positions of authority but abandon their proper dwelling, they have kept in darkness bound with the everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. They abandon their position and they have done something that was offensive to the Father. What was it? Here Jude gives us in a similar way. What happened to them when they left in a similar way Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. We know if you read the account what has happened in Sodom and Gomorrah, homosexuality. They went after a wrong uh, flesh. And we can see that it later on we're going to explain some more about this illustration. But let me come to a conclusion. It will suffice for me to say this much. These angels who have committed a sin, that is directly connected with the sexual immorality and perversion. And that is the one thing they were held in Tartarus by a chain in the darkest place. Brothers and sisters, from these portion of the verses we have discussed, we can see there are false teachers and false prophets will arise. Beware of them. May the Spirit of the Lord will give us enough discernment to detect who are these false teachers and false prophets. And I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, we will be able to discern. Do not follow or be deceived by these teachers. Our Lord, Master, and Savior has warned us, let no man deceive you. That's the warning. Jesus has given. So I want to encourage you, stay in the word, allow the Holy Spirit continue to work in your life so the gift of discernment that we will all have so that we can detect when we see a false prophet and a false teacher. May God bless you. Next week, we will take up the two other illustrations. What happened to the ancient world? What happened to the city of Sodom and Gomorrah? God bless you. Have a great day. Thank you.